have desire is the cause for suffering desire is the stuff of the soul desires coming from the mind mind's desires are different intellectual desires are different soul desires are more and more clear to us even a little amount extra i try to spoil the whole situation then they have taken a specific role so they- Osho taken the angle of celebration right before death and not life after death Hi sir namaste, namaste again Swami ji so today i have some questions around the soul manifestation the creation so first thing desires so far we've been told that if you have desire is the cause for suffering Whereas spiritual science is saying it's all about new experiences. The more you experience, the more you, uh, the life is full of experiences. And even many people quote Buddha also said that Trishna desire is the cause of suffering. So I just need some clarity on this. Sir. Desire is the stuff of the soul. Emotion is the stuff of the soul. The soul is made up of desires. Infinite number of desires. eternity of desires the body is made up of molecules the mind is made up of thoughts the intellect is made up of understandings or satories and the soul is made up of emotions and desires emotions desires and feelings that is the nature of the soul so you can't distract or remove desires from the soul desires are not to be controlled okay desires are to be mutually fulfilled it's not that i am fulfilling my desires at your cost okay so there should be no parasitism there should be only symbiosis with the relationship both of us should be benefited such a kind of desires are full in souls parasitism that kind of desire comes from the mind that doesn't come from the soul so there are desires coming from the mind and desires coming from the soul you have to differentiate between different types of desires those desires which come from the mind they are the cause of suffering i see okay buddha referred to those things okay but those desires which come from the soul are the cause of celebration so those desires from the soul are represented by a personality called as krishna okay and controlling those desires that come from the mind okay if i am a hindu if i built a temple i don't want a masjid by my side so that kind of desire is from the mind mind that causes suffering don't equate all desires at the same in the same baggage desires are different bodily desires are different mind's desires are different intellectual desires are different the soul's desires are different and of course god's desires are different you have to differentiate between desires and desires and desires the word may be the same desire it may emanate from a mind or the body or the intellect or the soul or the god which one is correct which one is wrong that you have to find out though desires coming from the mind they are wrong they are the cause of suffering those desires which come from the soul they are elevating they are mutually beneficial mutually beneficial in a given situation understand okay so when you are saying desires are the cause of suffering which desire understand buddha properly you must understand also krishna properly you take their statements out of context then you can't understand the yeah, meaning sir. you see must see the context the body has its own desires the body doesn't have desires the body has needs body has needs okay the mind has desires again the intellect has both needs and desires and the soul also has needs and desires i don't think soul has any needs it has got desires soul doesn't need anything the body has got needs the body has got needs the body doesn't have desires the mind has only desires only desires okay intellect has needs and desires soul has only desires and god 
doesn't have any desire. God is desireless. God is a witness. Okay. God doesn't have any desires. God doesn't demand anything from you. God is, has been your creator. Like your mother has created you. The mother doesn't have anything want return from you. Does your mother want any return from you? No. No way. Mother only knows how to give. God is that. God is the universal mother. Mother doesn't have any desire from you. The mother wants only your welfare, which you have to take care of your own welfare. God is like that, without desireless. The soul is a bundle of desires, bundle of symbiotic desires. Mind is providing parasitic desires. Can you give an example? And then intellect has needs and desires. So what are some examples of this? How do you distinguish first level? Ravana wanted Sita. That's a desire coming from the mind. Right. That led to all round suffering. Suffering in your own, own home and suffering in others' homes also. So parasitic desire is anything that you are causing force on somebody? Is that uh, how you say parasitic yes, desire? Yes, you know what is parasitism. What would be an intellect need versus desire? There are three types of relationships. Okay. Parasitism, commensalism and symbiosis. Okay. Parasitism is one, pers one being is benefited at the cost of other being. Right. Commensalism is one being getting benefit not at the cost of others and not at the harm of others also. Symbiosis is one getting the benefit of others and the other also getting benefit right. from you. Okay. These are the three types of relationships. So, three types. So, obviously the third one is the highest symbiosis. That is, that is what is, that comes from the soul level. Soul level. Parasitism comes from the mind level, mind. invariably. That is why Buddha said, Trishna is the desire is the cause of suffering. He was referring to the mind. Buddha never talked about the soul. Yeah, I know. He knew everything about the soul. But he said, talking about soul is redundant. Talking about the mind is useful. So whenever he talked anything, it all refers to the mind. Well, Krishna has taken another view. He always talked about the soul. Okay. These are two different viewpoints. Both are beneficial, equally beneficial. Even Osho also never talked about anything beyond life. Or rather, most of the books don't talk about, like you said, Buddha now talked about soul. But isn't that important from an understanding for someone to truly be crossing over the line or be enlightened, to understand the life after death? Why would they not talk about it even though they know about it? See, when I am singing Kalyani Ragam, how can I sing any lines from another ragam? I am concentrating on one ragam. Right. One thing I am doing. So I have to concentrate on whatever I am doing. That doesn't mean that I am not aware of other things. Right. That doesn't mean that other things are not needed by you. If you have chosen this ragam, I am the best. So you get this ragam from me. For other ragams, you go to other persons. Got it, sir. You have to, that's why you have to study all the masters. Yes. You can't be wedded to one master. Mm -hmm. Even if it is Buddha or Krishna, you can't be wedded to one master. Because it's never complete. No. Because every master specializes in certain departments. Every master. And you think that the, that is the only thing important or that is the only thing relevant for you. No. Every specialization of every master is relevant to you. In every master, in every lifetime, selects a different topic to specialize. The same master in another lifetime would take a different viewpoint of specialization. So, you have to study all the masters to be really benefited. That is what PSSM does. Clear, sir. Excellent. We are not at all wedded to one master. Yes. Neither to Buddha nor to Krishna, nor to Jesus. They are all specialists in their own fields. Every master is a specialist, has to be a specialist. They know everything. May know, may not know, but then they have taken a specific role, so they are under that one. So, Is Osho that, yes. has taken the angle of celebration. Celebration. Life before death. Life before death. It is not so much important about life after death. Yes, sir. Whereas Lopes and Rampa showed everything about life after death. Yes. I have learned both from Osho and from Lopes and Rampa. 
I have combined all the master's wisdom in PSSM. That was my end where. Yes, sir. Essentially, three people I have combined. First of all, Osho in celebration of life and life after death, Gops and Grandpa. And on the Theosophical Society model, we, we formed our Karnal Spiritual Society, Hyderabad Spiritual Society, and the Theosophical Society model. Okay. Gops and Grandpa did not create okay. a society model. He was not bothered about that. Osho did not create any societies, only he was important, only his teaching. But we have created everywhere societies on the model of Theosophical Society. Got it. In our organization structure. So, I have not only these people, many other masters, we have collected the wisdom from all the masters. Right, sir. And we have been highly successful, Chandra. Which also in develops a lot of research because everybody is uh, contributing to this. We have taken from every master and included in our agenda, in our syllabus, in our study. Sir, so coming back to the the desires, so soul desires and other desires, so how do we… Soul is full of desires, feelings, emotions. All the feelings and emotions and desires, they come from the soul. soul. But the mind chips in as a villain. That is where we have to be very careful. Meditation. Meditation, Swadhyaya, Sajjan Sangatya, Seva. Soul desires are more, more clear to us. Yes. So we allow our soul desires to be dominant. Dominant. And we allow our mind's desires to be subservient. See, the mind's desires are like this, you know, like the salt. If you increase the salt content, what happens in the foot? You have to throw it. If you, if you do not put any salt also? Can't have to. So, the mind is like salt. Even a little amount extra, extra, it will spoil the whole situation. So, you will have to be so balanced out of the middle oh, part for so that. So, very really careful when you are putting so salt in your foot. Yes. Put in very small doses. And something getting extra, you must cut it. Salt is a very good example for mind. What would that be on a soul level? Is there anything like that for soul? Soul, there are no limitations. There are no limitations. It, Soul desires, you can always, they are infinite and eternal. Infinite and Okay. Soul desires are symbiotic, you know. You want to help others because others want to help from you. There is no limitation there. So, sir, is that then the reason many a times people desire, I mean they wish for a lot of things. This whole manifestation in many, many ways they are applying their wishing, meditation, intents they put. But many times they say it has not happened. Because they come from the mind. They come from the mind. The God cannot allow it to happen. In fact, you have brought up a very beautiful topic, desires. Realize that mind's desires are different from the soul's desires. Yes, sir. Important differentiation. Yes, sir. It really come out very well. Yes, sir. That will answer all the questions. All the questions. About desires. Yes. Desirable desires and non-desirable desires. Non-desirable desires. Yeah. Mind is the cause of the whole problem, suffering. And soul is the cause of all celebration. This now gets a little more fundamental. So, why does that, is it for the contrast that is created, that mind is the cause of all suffering? And so we need always a contrast to highlight something. Okay. If I want to sing Malcolm's Rag, in Malcolm's Panchaman Rishabhami is not there. Malcolm's is like this. Nisa. Sanida Magaza. Pancham is not there, Rishabh is not there. So, this will create a beautiful, beautiful raga by itself. So, pure soul level is there, mind plus soul is there, mind less soul is there, all these situations are there for different contests, for different ragas, for different emotions, for different purposes. Everything is purposeful. Everything is purposeful. The animals have the minds, but they don't have the souls. Mm -hmm. This is one group soul for all the animals, okay. species. The topic came beautifully yesterday. Yes. yes. So, for every situation, there is a beauty in it. We want as many ragas as possible, as entirely different ragas as possible. All for different contrast. Different contrast, yes. So, in one of the sessions, I guess this is where the, the power of mind, you said manifestation, accessing the infinite power of mind, 
plus the maximum infinite power of soul. So visualization, he said, is infinite power of mind, and then actually the word mind and soul they are interchangeable. Interchangeable. For the purpose of specific analysis, we may use the different words mind and soul, but they are actually one and same. The soul in the physical body is called as the mind. The mind outside the physical body is called as the soul. Okay. But we need these different terms when we are applying for different situations. Mind is a product of yourself and the whole society around yourself. Okay. Whereas soul desires not a part of the society. Not a part of society. It's a part of the truth. But wouldn't that have the all the past memories from different uh, lifetimes? Is that in the mind? Is it in the soul? Which is also always in the, that's always in the soul. It's in the soul. But you, all your past memories, past talents, past abilities, that's all the soul. But your interactions with the souls, with the society, that is, that creates the mind. That creates the mind, which is so. Soul level is impersonalized. Yesterday you were saying here it's all personalized. So this personalized experience from all the past lifetimes. All past lives. Okay. So it includes many past lifetimes. The mind is the product of only this lifetime. So the past lifetimes feel constricted in the presence of this lifetime only. Fine, sir. So one last question on this, sir. Now you said the desires some don't manifest is because mind based. How the common question is how do we then do we wait till I know what exactly is my is there soul level or I continue to do because I continue to no, do? No, no, there is no way for you to know. Exactly, okay. Ignorant people, yeah. they can't differentiate between mind's desires and soul's desires. That's why they are called ignorant. Right. And they can't help themselves. They have to falter. By trial and error method, they will progress. But once you become a mature person, a wise person, you can easily differentiate between the mind's desires and the soul's desires. That is what is called a maturity. When you become a mature soul, then you don't falter. You guide others, immature souls. Infant soul, baby soul, young soul, and until the stage you come to mature soul, okay, you have to falter. You don't know what is what. That is the beauty of things. When you become a mature soul, you, will, you know what is what. When you become an old soul, you know what is what very well. So, until I graduate there, even though I am meditating, I won't know. If I don't know, but I don't stop to not do, instead I continue to... You continue to do. Continue to continue do. Continue to try and error method. Try and error method. Yes. So, I questions around um, the current circumstances. Yes. Businesses, organizations have challenges because of uh, lesser productivity, because people are not able to be there because of the fear and all that. So, the market... What do you mean by productivity? What they used to do before, the business is built in a certain model. Who cares for those businesses? Yes. Yeah. That's what. So, what Who cares for productivity? These are material terms. Correct. Which are of no significance in spiritual discussions that we are having. Buddha became a pauper. He left his palace. If all the people in the current living in the palace, they become beggars, what happens? They, be, they may become Buddhas. So. They will become Buddhas when they lose hold of their own money. Hmm. It's good. It's good. So that economy has failed. Okay. Then there is a lot of scope for Buddhas to arise. Yes. Jesus said, you can't be simultaneously a simultane man of God and a man of money. He said, a rich man cannot enter the kingdom of God as much as a camel cannot enter the eye of a needle. So, if, if because of this corona or covid, all the rich people become poor people, I will be very happy. Okay? There is no tragedy for me. So, the advice then to business leaders, the organization leaders is... Uh, be prepared to become a pauper. <laughs> Introduce, go more, more meditation, more... Become inter- a Buddha, yeah. Become Buddha. Instead of becoming a Buddha, now earlier you were a Birla, yes. now you will become a Buddha. Yes. Every Birla has to become a Buddha. Not necessarily losing money. Every Buddha has to add meditation to himself to become a Buddha. And Covid will see to that, that every Buddha will become a Buddha. Who don't care for economics. Who don't even care for one square meal. They are happy without eating anything. 
without having anything. They are happy only when they have something or when they eat something. Spiritual people, they don't have anything, they don't eat anything, they are happy. The whole world is going to become happier. Every Bidla, every non Bidla is going to be Buddha. The times have come like that. So, this fear of death, sir, so because of this COVID situation, continue to cling on to, people continue to cling on to that and then hoping that the vaccination will solve all the problems. Because I'm also hearing these conversations are you taking it? Are you taking it? These kind of things that we, people are talking. People are stupid. And the, they don't what? know what is the truth. You always they are always looking for an external cause and an external remedy. There is no external cause and there is no external remedy. There is always internal cause and internal remedy. That is what is spirituality. In. Internal. Not external. There is no external cause for suffering and there is no external cause for remedy. There is always internal cause for suffering. Man's desires. Violence, killing of animals. You know? One cruelty of one human being towards another human being. They are not talking about these things, which are the real causes. They are talking about some coronavirus and for producing antivirus. If it helps, really there is no need for any Jesus or Buddha. There is no spirituality. Hmm. If external cause is the truth and if external remedy is the truth, we don't care for any Jesus and Buddha. They are stupid people. If science is correct, spirituality is stupid. And if spirituality is correct, science is stupid. As simple as that. Which one is stupid? A Jesus cannot be stupid. A Buddha cannot be stupid. A Ramana Maharshi cannot be stupid. He doesn't have anything. Ramana Maharshi. A small piece of cloth on his body. The whole world is talking about Ramana Maharshi. If you are a true scientist, you will naturally become a spiritualist. Spiritualist. You said science responsibility to... This science is pseudoscience. Okay. If you are a cancer specialist, so-called cancer specialist, you have studied oncology and you are practicing consciousness, you got so many things to cure a cancer. But if some cancer patient comes to me, I ask him to do a meditation for th three days in the king's chamber in the pyramid. He goes and does it and he gets rid of all the cancer according to his own analytic reports. If such a patient goes to the oncologist, the oncologist will refuse to see him. Actually, he should be very happy to see him that he has cured himself of cancer without going to an oncologist or chemotherapy or surgery with, through meditation. But he will not do that. He is not a scientist at all. He is a businessman. Uh -huh. He has invested some money in his college that he wants to return. That's all. He is only a businessman. He is not a scientist. If he is a scientist, he would immediately stop his oncology for practice and come to meditation. Yes. But they are not scientists at all. They are called pseudo-scientists. If you are a scientist, immediately you will become a spiritualist. All around you there are manifestations of meditation. From science, from times immemorial. People don't have scientific temper at all. You are calling them scientists. I call them pseudo-scientists. They are not a scientist, they are businessmen. They are selfish people. They want some return. They are not in search for truth. If you are really a scientist, if you are really for search for truth, immediately will come to meditation. You will immediately see the psychosomaticity of everything. You will immediately see a Buddha and not a Birla. Hmm. If you are a scientist, scientists are very rare. Selfish people, business people are always in numbers. And those rare scientific minded people automatically become a Ramana Maharshi, a Buddha, a Meher Baba, a Siddhi Sai, a Jesus, a Mahavir, a Krishna. They are all scientists. These are the people, the true scientists. Science is, if it, if it is science, it will lead you to spirituality. If it is business, it will never lead you to spirituality. If it is selfishness, it will never lead you to spirituality. If it is science, immediately it will lead you to spirituality. If it is science. Confucius said, if you want to see the greatness of your world, if you want to show the greatness of your world, your country to the world at large, you must first set right your states. 
if you want to satirize the states, you first must regulate the families. If you want to regulate the families, you must first cultivate your personal life. If you want to cultivate your personal life, you must first rectify your mind. If you want to rectify your mind, you must make your will sincere. If you want to make your will sincere, you must investigate into things. When things are investigated, your knowledge is extended. When your knowledge is extended, your will becomes sincere. When the will becomes sincere, the mind is rectified. When the mind is rectified, the personal life is cultivated. Then the families are in order, regulated. The states are in order and you can show the greatness of your country to the world at large. Investigation of things, that is scientific temper, Swamiji. This oncologist, when somebody says, I went to Pyramid Valley, I sat in the King's Chamber, in three days, I cleared all my clear. See, see your own reports. Before I went to Pyramid, these are the reports. After I came from the Pyramid, these are the reports. No, no, I don't want to see all those things. Yeah. His career at stake. He has to leave all his oncology field. Yeah. If he is a, if he is in search for truth, if he is really invested in investigating things, he is not invest, interested in investigating things, Baba. He doesn't want to rectify his mind. He doesn't want his personal life to be cultivated. He only wants to loot money. Okay, free will. They will need more proof. I guess they, because their personality is so strongly developed for them about these beliefs. See, they are like Dhritarashtra, blind people. Even if Krishna comes, they don't listen to him. They will listen only to their own sons. That's true. Perfect example. They are clinging to their kingdoms. Yeah, the kingdoms yes. Like this. My oncology department, my white apron, stethoscope. They feel powerless without all those things. They prefer doctor before them. No. They are not doctors. They are themselves patients. They are patients. They are intellectually handicapped persons, scientifically handicapped persons. They think they are doctors. Hmm? They are simply mad people. Neither are they doctors nor they are scientists. They are selfish people doing good business. Yes, these are. Uh because the decisions are going in a different direction because they, they try to now go all the way out to hire even though they don't have a right talent. Because I have to hire a woman, I have to hire a disabled person, they'll go to any extent and hire them. Which doesn't seem like uh, the opposite uh, spiritual understanding. Business by definition is anti-spirituality. Okay. Okay. In the higher world, there is no business. That's right. There is no competition. Yes. There are no cooperation. Where the cooperation doesn't ha have any space for business. Business is available only in the earth planet. Other world's people, they are laughing at these business people, our businessmen, the business management. So, grassroots level then should be only creation then. Business means the way I was thinking is uh, creating a something larger. A group of people come together. Maybe that's. Uh... You can be a good businessman only after you become a good meditator, okay. enlightened master. Then you can do all the business then your business is helpful for the whole society, whatever the way you do. Thank you, sir. A lot of questions. Diversity of uh, understanding, I think there is a lot that we understood about the desire. Particularly, I today, desire set uh, mind, intellect, soul, differentiation, I think really wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Baba.